and this is the presentation of the work my mouse my rules privacy issues of behavioral user profiling via mouse tracking which was done in collaboration with Luis Leiva and Costa Ciordan. In the modern web, privacy has become a rare commodity. The recent proliferation of intrusive and privacy invasive ads has raised serious concerns among users and industry regulatory bodies. This is because web tracking and user profiling tend to rely on mechanisms that uniquely identify and track users' online behavior including, for example, geolocation, visited pages, search keywords, and social network activity. All of this in order to better understand the user intentions and interests. Some effort has been put to regulate the web tracking landscape, like self-initiatives from the ad industry that include recommendations for good practices and transparency tools like ad choices. Also in 2018, the European Union set in place the new General Data Protection Regulation and the state of California and the United States enforced the Consumer Privacy Act. However, while ad blocking and user privacy extensions have been successful in mitigating the user's exposure to web tracking, they eventually hurt web revenue streams, leading to the so-called tragedy of the commons, where the common resource, that is the user intention, is being depleted. However, there are other less known methods that allow profiling the user and I have been flown, been flying under the radar, such as the one by, uh, by means of mouse capture tracking. The mouse tracking technology has been used successfully to inform usability tests, predict user engagement and intent, detect searcher frustration, and infer user attention to parts of a web page, to name a few examples. Unfortunately, because mouse tracking can be performed unobtrusively and at scale, it has opened the door to a brand new wave of massive tracking campaigns that hide behind laudable objectives such as providing fine-grained in-page analytics to website owners. Interestingly, by tracking the mouse cursor, it is possible to profile the user's demographics, namely predicting age and gender, a piece of valuable in personal data that most users are unaware of. With this work, we want to raise awareness about the facts and reflect on the trade-offs between privacy and technological innovation. To this end, we implemented a control study that reproduced the setting of a sponsor search task. Since sponsor search provides the necessary revenue streams to commercial web search engines, and it is critical to the success of many websites. Also, commercial web search engines resort to various tracking techniques to monitor the user's search activity, including mouse cursor tracking, and use that information to offer item recommendations, uh, do targeted advertising, or simply sell it to third parties. Here we apply the following experimental design. We ask our participants to perform a brief transactional search task where they were presented with a predefined search query and a corresponding SERP and were asked to click on any element of the page that answered it best. Overall, the task consists of three parts, the pre-task guidelines, the web search task, and a post-task questionnaire. Each participant was allowed to perform the search task only once to avoid introducing possible carryover effects. Participants were asked to act naturally and choose anything that would best answer a given search query since all clickable elements on the SERP were considered valid answers. Um, you see an example of the instructions where the uh, user is asked to buy uh, something as a gift for them or somebody they know, and you know they have submitted the search query to Google Search, and they are asked to browse the results and click on any element that you know, they would normally select under this scenario. The search queries, were, were, which were all picked from a pool of popular queries in Google Search were randomly distributed among our participants. The corresponding SERPs appeared all in English and were scraped for later instrumentation, simulating thus a website owner uh, who wished to track their users every move. We collected data from 3,206 uh, users of age 18 to 66 using FTrack, which is a general purpose open source JavaScript event tracking library. And in addition to the mouse cursor data, we uh, gathered grand truth information about the users through an online uh, questionnaire that was administered post-task and asked about their gender, age group, and native language. After excluding the users that did not provide the demographic information or had few mouse movements, that's less than 10 mouse coordinates, 
uh, we concluded on a set of 1467 uh, search sessions. Uh, next, our data set was divided into a 90 10 training test split, 90% of which uh, was used for model training, the remaining 10% for testing. The focus of this experiment is uh, to demonstrate you know, how feasible it is to implement a user profiling mechanism by relying on current machine learning techniques and easily acquired mouse cursor data. Therefore, for the sake of simplicity, we assume gender and age classification to be a two-class problem. So a, a user is classified as either male or, or female and uh, as young or adult. We replicate the random forest classifier proposed in recent work, which is an effective and simple method. And we additionally engineer a series of features and aggregate functions uh, derived from the mouse cursor data as proposed by previous work. We also implement a zero R classifier, which simply predicts the majority, majority class. Creating a competent feature based classifier like the random forest demands significant effort and time because of the feature engineering process. With neural networks, uh, feature engineering is automatically performed by the network itself and together with the availability of state-of-the-art deep learning libraries like TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, and so on, it has become increasingly easy to uh, implement a competent classifier with a few lines of code. Since uh, mouse movements are of sequential nature, we test a particular type of recurrent neural networks that is effective at modeling time series where its data point in the sequence can be assumed to be dependent on the previous one. Concretely, the model uses gated recurrent unit memory, uh, which is a simplification of the popular long short term memory. And we use the bidirectional variant, bigru, since a major issue with all RNNs is that they can only learn representations from previous time steps. So our model architecture takes as input a raw sequence of mouse cursor uh, positions and time offsets, which can be seen as a multivariate time series of three dimensional data points. Because its mouse movement has a different length, all sequences are padded to a fixed length of 100 time steps. And you can see here various details about the implementation of our, of our model, um, such as the, um, the hidden layer and the, the number of output units, uh, the drop rate, and, uh, and, and other information like the, the optimizer used and the learning rate. Most importantly, uh, but you know, the takeaway message of, from these slides that in, you know, including all these uh, settings described here, is implemented actually in five lines of uh, Python code, and we, we trained this model with a batch size of thirty-two sequences up to four hundred epochs, uh, and use early stopping to prevent overfeeding. Next, uh, we report the weighted precision recall uh, F measure according to the target class distributions in its gates. And in addition, we provide the area under the rock curve. We note that the, again, that the focus of this exercise is not attaining state-of-the-art performance, but rather on demonstrating that it's feasible to implement a fairly competent user profiling technique by relying on current ML techniques and easily acquired mouse cursor data. Now, moving on to the age classification task, um, aging is, marked by a decline in motor control abilities. Therefore, it is expected to affect the user's pointing performance and by extension, how they move the computer mouse. Prior work has linked aids with uh, motor control and pointing performance in tasks that involve the use of a computer mouse. For example, in previous studies, older people incurred in longer mouse cursor movement times, more sub movements and more pointing errors than the young. These features uh, show the performance results for the classification task that targets user age. And here we divide the users into two age groups, 18 to 35 and 36 to 66, in line with previous work that applied a comparable binary split on the uh, user sample. While the random forest achieved an F measure of 0 0.53 and an AUC of 0 0.52, the Biguru outperformed its peers with an F measure of 0 0.65 and an AUC of 0 0.71. Furthermore, we, we run pairwise comparisons of proportions and observed statistically significant differences for all metrics when comparing the biogre against the other classifiers. Moving on to the gender classification, prior research has also uh, noted sensory motor differences due to angel, uh, gender, such as uh, significant variation in the cursor movement distance, pointing time, and cursor patterns. The cause of these variations has been attributed to gender-based differences in how um, users move a mouse cursor 
or to different cognitive mechanisms, you know, perceptual and spatial processes involved in motor control. These figures show the performance results for the classification task that targets user gender. Again, the Biogre model outperforms its peers. And more specifically, the random uh, forest model achieved an F measure of 0 0.52 and an AUC of 0 0.49, while the Biogre achieved an F measure of 0 0.64 and an AUC of 0 0.65. Um, although this result might not be as impressive as those pertaining AIDS classification, they clearly deviate from random classification and definitely call for attention to the potential implications to, you know, for your privacy. More importantly, with this analysis, we demonstrate that a shallow bigger model can outperform a predictive model that relies on a barrage of elaborate features by using exclusively as input unprocessed mouse cursor movements. And those are, you know, uh, as we um, argued, easy to acquire uh, unobtrusively and at scale. Next, we propose an adversarial method to modify the user's movements in such a way that the resulting trajectory cannot disclose age and gender information. The method is illustrated in this figure. Uh, as you can see, whenever a mouse movement event E uh, happens at time T, we insert now another mouse movement event pro uh, programmatically, that's E prime, um, which is within an, uh, a radius sigma away from the original coordinate. This additive Gaussian noise is also applied to the time offsets to ensure that the distorted trajectory has now duplicated times. The, again, amount of adversarial noise applied to its programmatic event ranges randomly from zero to sigma, hence its mouse sequence is distorted accordingly to a random uniform distribution, which means that some coordinates are preserved when, when sigma equals zero, whereas, whereas others are more distorted when sigma equals one. Theoretically, a random classifier should uh, achieve an AUC score of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 for a two-class classification problem. Therefore, we expect to see a degradation in the classification performance with regard to the previous experiments. As you can see in these figures, uh, using a radius of sigma equals 0 0.25 pixels is enough to degrade the performance of the bigroom model, which begins to behave as a random classifier for both age and gender. The differences between the original mouse data and the degraded versions are statistically significant. By using this adversarial noise, a mouse movement trajectory would become illegible to any ML model trying to classify the user's age and gender. And to further validate the you know, um, effect of the adversarial noise technique, we also retrain our model with the distorted data using the same configuration from our previous experiments. And as you can see in the table, um, the set model achieves worse performance than the model trained on the original non-distorted data, sometimes by a large margin. And this is a special show for the AIDS classifier. Now, advertising is currently the main business model of free content and services on the web, though it is something that when something is free, it usually means that the user is the product. The rapid growth of online advertising has spurred the demand for effective, but at times also privacy invasive uh, user profiling techniques that allow to deliver more relevant end content to the user. The mouse cursor tracking is very difficult to avoid while browsing the web. Our mouse cursor movements can be tracked silently at scale in incognito mode and even without JavaScript enabled. So being a low cost and reasonably reasonable proxy of visual attention, mouse tracking cannot be discounted from being a modern Trojan horse if users do not give informed consent. However, you know, we do not argue that mouse tracking should be removed from any website as it may be a valuable data source for various application scenarios. Rather, we find it disconcerting that currently there is no way for end users to opt out easily. And here you see an example of how uh, simple it is to implement this uh, tracking method. All it takes is five lines of code in Keras. And, you know, to conclude, I just want to say that this war games at raising awareness on these emerging privacy threats in the online world. And we, what we want to do is expose some of the unaccounted yet sizable risks of the modern tracking technologies. And what we want to do is give control back to the users over the mouse data. And I propose that adversarial noise technique is the first countermeasure against user profiling based on mouse cursor tracking. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoy this presentation. You can find more information about uh, the mouse cursor data set we use for the study as well as the um, adversarial uh, uh, extension, Chrome extension that we provide for free in these uh, links.